Hi everyone, you saw the title of the video. I'm listening to Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band for the first time. It's a bit of a mouthful, but I'm excited to give it a listen. I already listened to the two singles that kind of accompany this album, so you can check that video out if you want. I really liked them, so I am looking forward to this one. My prediction is that we're continuing down the road of having so many orchestral instruments, having almost every instrument family in these songs, with the lyrics being a little bit more down the line of Eleanor or rugby, much more storytelling songs in that sort of way. I could be wrong, but that's my guess. Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band is the eighth studio album by the English rock band The Beatles. It was released on the 26th of May 1967, and let's get to it. Also, I saw some comments people weren't asking what this is. So, this is the Beatles Complete Score. I bought this a few months into this journey just to help, like, if I wanted to go a little bit more into depth. In as to why certain songs sounded that way, I could kind of do it on the spot by going through this. Um, as I do not have the capability to just listen to a song and know what key it's in or what change is happening, so this is my guide sometimes. Okay, so the first song is the same name as the album, Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band. It's lead vocals by Paul McCartney, so let's see what... Uh, I just feel like because it's like... Sergeant Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club band. I feel like it has to be quite full on and intense. I'm imagining lots of brass as well. Let's see if I'm right. Setting the scene with sound effects. sounding a little bit more like old school Beatles to me. They've got the electric guitar, this distor distorted kind of sound in their vocals with the addition of having orchestral instruments, which they didn't do all that much at the beginning of the career. They started seeping it in subtly, but I was right about the brass. I'm never right about this. So this is exciting. <laughs> Like you can totally tell that they've added the sound effects of an applause of an audience because it really does sound like old school rock being performed live and they're like trying to hype up the audience so it's kind of interesting how they have tried to create that atmosphere through adding that sound effect of an audience and I'm wondering if there's going to be more of that throughout the songs like they're using audio of external environments to help create atmospheres for the song. I think we'll see more of that. That kick drum, that bass. Boom, boom. One. With a little help from my friends, I know this one. What would you think if oh. I sang out a tune? Walk out on me. Oh. I really like how they have the first song carry on into the second one, a continuation, as if it was a live show, which makes sense now why they had the audience applauding, because like it leads into the second one. It's almost as if this recording has been taken from a live show. I know it hasn't, but like that's the vibe they've tried to create with it. And this is with a little help from my friends. I do know this song because I used to work in a kinder and this was one of the songs we used to put at the end of this year slideshow with all the photos. So I do know this one, so I think it's quite sweet. So I just wanted to quickly break down their piano because I think the way they've written it is really clever. So we start with the E which they've chosen the root position of the fifth and then we go easily go down to the B which is in the root position. Then we have F sharp minor seven and they do it in the root of the seventh and from that F sharp minor seven we go to the B7 having the third in the root and then we resolve back to the E in the root of the fifth. And it's just like by having the chords not always in their root position, it allows that movement to be really interesting to the ear. And it's because if I was doing it in the root, 
Like it sounds fine, but it's like too jumpy. So by doing that, it's just really clever. And I just wanted to point that out. And of course, this song is an E major. They love the E major, the Beatles. Oh, isn't that sweet? Hi. Added harmonies to keep it going. I love the run on the tops. It's so pretty, the melody. I just want to point out that the bass, like it's very like once the bass is um, hit, it doesn't really sustain for very long. It's kind of cut off and I just wanted to point that out because you can make a bass sustain or not. And that's just an interesting thing to point out. Like the bridge. I need somebody to love. Anybody. Nice harmony. Adding extra energy. What do you see when I can tell you but I know it's mine? Oh my friends. I like this one, it's so feel good. Okay, that sounds a little bit, I'm, I'm noticing something. So, we're in the key of A major. The relative minor is C sharp minor. And that's what they've done for that section to make it sound a little bit different, have that feeling. It's gone to this C sharp minor. Could it be anybody? Like, yeah. Just need someone to love. Anybody. Somebody to love. I just had to double check because I wanted to make sure I was saying the right thing. Yeah, Ringo Starr. I feel like that, like, usually when he sings, his vocal range is, like, it's quite in, um, the range isn't too huge, but that seems to be, like, a little bit more confident of him to sing a little bit higher and a bit more full-on towards the end. Just something I'm noticing. Yeah, I love that one. I've heard it before. I haven't listened to it that much, but I've heard it before, and it just makes you feel happy and feel good. So this one's Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds. I've heard bits of this, this Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds. <laughs> Picture yourself in a river okay. with tangerine trees and skies. Okay. I've imagined it again. Imagine. Call, quite what is that? A girl with This is sounding more trippy to me. There's moments like this, I'm very thankful for this because there's no way I could figure it out with just my brain. So they start in D major and then there's clearly a shift, like a key change. So then it goes to F major and that's why we get quite a shift of feeling straight away. You're like, oh, 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 okay. And then they're gonna do another key change later on in the song as I can see from here. Um, I have heard this song before, so this I hope this isn't spoiling my first time reaction. <laughs> That's Thomas. I don't know what this even means, but I like it. <laughs> At least I've heard that's apparently meant to be a reference to something else, but it's actually not. Uh, you all will all know far more about that than I. Yeah, so just when we get into the chorus, let's see in the sky with diamonds, they've gone from now the F major to the G major. So we've gone from the D major to the F major. Now we're in the key of G major. So we're like, what, a minute in and we've re already had three key changes? Like what? But you can clearly hear, like I don't have to tell you that there was a key change for you to notice. Hey, something happened there. Like you can hear, but just to explain, like that's the reason why it sounds that way. <laughs> Sorry, I just wanted to point out I'm loving the reverb on John Lennon's voice because it really helps create the atmosphere that it's like a 
fair to see like Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds. Like I don't think that's a grounded song in reality from what I'm hearing. So just the adding that extra reverb on his voice helps create it, that atmosphere to me at least. Then it all slows down, strips back down. Nice symbol. Bass walking up, boom, boom, boom. Okay, change. And it just fades out and strips back. So what I wanted to point out musically, so the chorus is in the key of G and then we go back to the D major which is what the verse is in and it doesn't sound too drastic of a jump because the only difference between the G and the D is one sharp so it's not as drastic as we had from going from the um, D major to the F major when there's a little bit of a difference there. Well, yeah, I don't really know what the meaning of this song is. The girl with kaleidoscope eyes. I guess kaleidoscope eyes is someone who can see all the colours of the rainbow. Someone who sees things that no one else does. Oh, I don't know. Who knows? The only other song that I know uses the word kaleidoscope is Candy Fell the Love Tonight. I'm pretty sure Kaleidoscope by Elton John, written by Benny Torpin, and I think they were inspired by the Beatles. That's just my mind just having a moment now. And the nice guitar just keeps it moving, the plucking. I like the organ there. I like how there's that extra different rhythm from the organ, just adding a little surprise, like da da da. It's a nice surprise, and it just keeps fading out. Nice. <laughs> I just say I'm really liking kind of the happy vibes of this album so far. Um, I know I say I tend to listen to melancholic songs on re-listens, but uh, yeah, so far, I don't know. This is, it, I feel warm and fuzzy listening to this, so it's a good experience. Next one is Getting Better, sung by both Paul McCartney and John Lennon, so let's go. Just as I was saying that I'm really enjoying the kind of more upbeat ones, I think this one's going to be more slow tempo because I feel like there needs to be a change in the mood of the album, that's my guess. No, I was wrong. <laughs> Always wrong. It is getting better all the time. Bye. It's getting better. Getting better. I like how I say that. like whoop whoop it's so subtle but I really like it what is it can you hear it I like the way they announce it getting better I don't know I just it's it's making me happy you gave me the word. I heard. getting better Man, I was mean, but I'm changing my scene and I'm doing the best that I can. That's a lot to unpack. On one hand, I'm like, okay, love the self-awareness to wanting to get better, but on the other hand, I'm like, ah! <laughs> I know people are gonna be mad at me for saying that. I know people are like, it's just a song, you're reading too much into it. This is first reaction videos. This is how I'm reacting as a first listen, okay? <laughs> Oh, I like that. So that was quite a heavy topic, subject matter. Um, it did take me back by surprise. I can't say like if this, this is how one or that some of them felt. Um, but you know, the character of this song, I'm going to just refer to it in that way. 
admittedly did awful things to his partner and then is trying to change and trying to be better and realize that the way he acted was wrong. So like, that's good. We love self-awareness and we love growth, but it's also just like sad that that behavior had to happen in the first place. You know, like that's sad. So the next one is called Fixing a Hole, sung by Paul McCartney. My guess is that it's going to be like, you know, the saying like, you just keep digging yourself into a deeper and deeper hole. So I'm guessing it's going to be like the character singing like, oh, I'm trying to get myself out. I'm trying to fix the hole that I've created. And you know what? I'm going to be wrong. So, so let's do the opposite guess and say <laughs> that it's literal. I'm feeling the cracks that ran through the door. It really doesn't matter if I'm wrong or I'm right. See me standing disagree. I'm painting the room. So in here it says it's a piano, but it sounds more like an organ to me. But the keys, you have a very consistent rhythm in them, right? You have the percussion, like keeping it going. You have the bass, which is jumping all over the place to keep the song going. And then you have the electric guitar that kind of comes in as a counter melody in the breaks of the singing. So I feel like it's just really nicely layered to keep the song going. Lyrics, it's just kind of funny. I'm like, is it, is it really literal? Literal? Was I kind of right? Did I kind of get it right? <laughs> Love the slide in the vocals. There. There. Nice backing. Bump, bump, bump. Walking down. <laughs> I really am liking the backing vocals. The ooze, they're so sway. Like, ooh. Like, oh, they're creating such an atmosphere, like from the absence you can hear from the first verse to now, like they really add some character to this song. I'm really liking this. This is a very restrained song, but it's, mm, it's nice. Doing so much of the surprise endings as they were um, before. Interesting. I just really like that one. That one's just a cool vibe. Very, this is the content you're here for, for me to say it. Oh, that's a cool vibe. <laughs> how, I don't know how he managed to make the subject of fixing a hole engaging, but it worked. Oh, I just, honestly, I think the favorite part of that song for me was the backing vocals. I really enjoy that. And then the slide of the vocals, ah, oh, it was just like really nice. So this one is She's Leaving Home, lead vocals by Paul McCartney and John Lennon. Um, okay, so my natural instinct is for them to be singing about someone who's leaving home. But I'm always wrong with my guesses, so let's think. Maybe they're singing about a daughter who's leaving home, or like a sister. Like, it's not going to be what I think it is. So, it's that. Maybe. But probably not, because I'm always wrong. Oh. The day begins Silently closing door Leaving the note that she hoped would say more Downstairs to the kitchen clutching Oh, this is gonna make me cry, isn't it? The back door keeps Stepping outside Is this now a different character? So that it sounds like the first story is like, I can't tell, it feels like to me like it's a mother who's leaving 
a home like as in leaving leaving ah i could probably be very wrong about this i'm gonna restrain from looking up so just bear with me so if i'm commenting and it's wrong lyrically i'll find out after this but initially it sounds like mother is leaving and now they're talking about the dad still asleep when mother's putting on her dressing gown so i don't know if I'm, this is a new story or like maybe the sister or someone else left in the start. I don't know. But musically you have a beautiful harp accompanied with the cello which just a cello has such warmth in its tone and can just like grab your heart and like which it's doing. Um, and the melody. Oh it's so beautiful. Far out. And again it's in the key of A major. <laughs> Fix up the letter that's lying there I guess their daughter's left. Just so thoughtlessly, she do this to me. The daughter is leaving home. The parents, like, we gave her everything we could. We struggled so hard to give her the life, and she's leaving. But it sounds like the backing vocals are doing both the thoughts of the parents and the daughter. I could be totally wrong in that. So you have, we struggled hard all our lives to get by, and then you have the other backing vocals going, she's leaving home after living alone for so many years. So it's like the daughter, I'm guessing what is the daughter, was felt lonely living at that family home, but from the parents' perspective, they're like, hey, we gave you everything we could and you just left and you've been so careless, you didn't even say goodbye. So it's like, yeah! This could almost be like in a musical number, like the storytelling of it. I love musicals, so when I say that I mean that as a compliment, just in case people don't like musicals. Um, oh, what? Is far away. And the strings are going in opposite directions to add that. She made from the motor trade. She Like they had the narrator explaining what happened and then in the chorus you have the thoughts of the parents almost being like what did we do wrong we gave it everything and then you have like the narrator almost being like she was alone that's kind of why she left she left for the guy and what a story that was beautiful an arrangement what i was trying to say before and i cut myself off because i just wanted to listen to the lyrics um there's a thing called parallel movement where like everything moves in the same way which is fine it's not wrong but Sometimes if you have instruments going in opposite directions, your ear can kind of pick up that there's more movement occurring and they were doing that with the strings towards the ends. I just wanted to point that out. Is it controversial to say that I'm enjoying this more than Revolver? And also to mention they had these like these staccato menacing strings after the chorus, not so much as an Eleanor Rigby. Rigby. These are a little bit more subtle, but um, to kind of add to the chaos of what's happening, like their daughter's just left home and... This is being for the benefit of Mr. Kittle. <sighs> How am I meant to guess what this is about? Mr. Kite, Kite. I read it wrong. The Hendersons will all be there, later Pablo Bank is there. So I was wrong because apparently now I can't read and I read Mr. Kittle instead of Mr. Kai. <laughs> of the organ. And the bass is just like walking down, keeping going. It's like a circus show, isn't it? Piano. I sounded so 
they're like circus fair, like a mad cabaret kind of environment. So you have like everything going up and down, sliding up and down, which kind of adds that chaotic atmosphere. And then you have these very unusual sounds, it almost sounds like a plopping sound, and then of course you get the piano and you're like, what? And then it breaks back into the beginning. Uh, uh, I think it's the organ. What an unusual <laughs> sound! Yeah, that consistent percussion to keep the familiarity. It's not changing much. Is that it? Is it done? It's done! Oh, okay, it ended. <laughs> wow! Voice inside all of us. Um, this one is Within You Without You, sung by George Harrison. Instant thought is it's romantic relationship. Considering I'm always wrong, let's think complete opposite and say it's about something about spirits and souls. Okay. Oh, got the satires going. That's a Pigeo Okay, is it to me the tempo is speeding up, right? Like it's not just me. Okay, hold on. I just want to make sure I'm hearing all these lyrics correctly. We were talking about the space between us. All and the people who hide themselves behind a wall of illusion. Well, that's some deep sh <laughs> there. Is that strings? Who would have thought it? this is sitar and strings combined sound insanely nice? I apologize if that's something that's very common that happens, but I don't think I've ever heard a sitar and strings together. It creates like a ooh, an atmosphere I don't think I've heard before. Are they only knew what? And they all laugh as it ends. And the time will come when you see we're all one and life flows on within you and they. That's really cool. Um, that seems like a very spiritual song, like kind of talking about that life is more than just you. We are all connected as spirits, as souls. I don't know what you all believe in, but that's how I am hearing this. And life goes within you and without you. It feels like a very whole circle of life situation. Kind of song blew me away in terms of I've never heard strings and sitar. Um, that's a whole new type of music to me. I wouldn't even call it so much psychedelic, even though it probably is. It's just that combination of instruments. I was like, whoa, you're, wow. <laughs> Caroline's quotes, and wow. This one is When I'm 64. Sung by Paul McCartney. So my instant thought is he's singing about when he is going to be 64 and what he's going to think and what will the world be. But because that's my first instinct, I'm going to be wrong. So, <laughs> when I'm 64, hmm, maybe someone is telling him that's older than him, like when you're, when I'm 64, like someone older than him is telling him the story of when I'm 64. <laughs> Does that make sense? <laughs> that was perfectly like the time.
Losing my hair many years from now. Will you still be sending me a Valentine? If I've been out till quarter to three, would you lock the door? Will you still feed me when I'm 64? They did their relative minor there. It sounded very minor -y. I feel like I'm getting slightly better at this thing because I'm right. They go to their A minor, which is the relative minor. My ears are learning. Look at this. I'm so proud. And they use a clarinet and a bass clarinet. The most different the way you can tell whether it's a clarinet or like an oboe because they look quite similar um oboes have a more of a nasal they're more piercing um they and clarinets are just like a warm warm tone hug vibe it just sounds perfectly like the title of the song and i love that <laughs> Because like when you're in your 20s, 64 seems so old. But like when you meet people that are in their 60s, you're like, oh hey, they still just interact like young people. They're just older. Do you know what I mean? Like they're a little bit wise, a little bit more mature. You know, they obviously lived far more of a life. But like they're still very capable people at 64. So it seems like a very kind of cute, charming lyric and song to write. Because you realize 64 really ain't that old. You know what I mean? See, this one is Lovely Rita, sung by Paul McCartney. My thought is they're singing about someone, Lovely Rita, like their age, but perhaps the Lovely Rita is an older, lovely lady, like a family friend. Just to go with the opposite of what I would usually think. That's a nice reverb on that. Beatles like and then having the old school piano sound is just like a good vibe. I <laughs> like this. <laughs> nice bass. <laughs> that sounds menacing. What's happened just now? Okay, this is Good Morning, Good Morning, sung by John Lennon. Good morning, good morning. It has to be about the morning. I cannot be wrong by guessing it's about a morning. <laughs> and you got a restart! Of course. Good morning, good morning. It's a chaotic morning. Right, like you're walking down the street with a marching band and everything's really dramatic because I tell you maybe the Beatles are not ah morning people because I tell you I'm not and if I heard this in the morning I'd be like shh I'm really getting the sense that they're just having so much fun in this album they were really just like we're doing whatever we want nothing has changed it's still the same on 
this is I'm really enjoyable. Oh, Are they on a farm? <laughs> it's like they've woken up the whole farm. Horses, dogs, cats. I don't think I actually had a cat. A restart. So I'm looking at the sheet music right now and probably the little time signature changes from 5-4 to 3-4. Honestly, I was struggling to count the time signature, especially with the drums. Like I was trying to predict it and I was getting it all wrong. This is Sergeant Pepper. Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band reprise. Usually when I hear a reprise, it's in a musical and a reprise of that song is usually a slowed down, more melancholic version of the original. So honestly, that's what I'm going to guess. One, two, three, one. Wrong again. about the reprise but it was like they started the concert this is how I'm hearing it because I've got the audience they started the concert with the same song end it with the same song audience applause enter into their encore of a day in the life that's how I'm hearing this album anyways a day in the life let's go in the life of other people and you can't look away from the chaos that is happening in the world and then you have the staccato strings to add to that tense feeling the piano crescendoing to add to that tense feeling of like the bad happening I'm looking up I noticed I was late seconds flat on that piano it just keeps going is it meant to be an unpleasant high squealing sound never gives me any other way oh this is gonna haunt my dreams <laughs> it sounds very pleasant like a normal song and then you have this incredibly for me uncomfortable tension building up like it's horror and then crescendos and then you get this piano and then it kind of happens again and then it just kept surprising. Found my way upstairs and had a smoke and somebody spoke and I went into a dream. That's when we got the nice reverb on the vocals. It seems like they just had a bunch of stories, like a day in the life of different people's lives and they put it there. But I'm trying to wonder what the significance of the choice behind having such a horror piece of music. I'm sorry, I'm not saying it's bad, but it's just like quite unpleasant for me to hear that section. I, mm. Um... I think I liked this more than Revolver. I saw everyone telling me that, you know, Revolver's gonna blow me away, Revolver, Revolver. Um, not that it was bad, I enjoyed it, but I find, I don't know, just from first listen, I'm enjoying this one a little bit more. Um, I think my favorite one was potentially She's Leaving Home, I thought was really incredible. Within You Without You, subject matter, like to be have such a spiritual song. Again, I found that quite like, oh wow. Yeah, thank you for watching and until next time, bye.